Now that I'm in the pantry, I see calamari and it's incredible, so I'm gonna go with that. I see fennel and shallots and lots of things that are just marriage when it comes to calamari. Squid. Is it squid? Yes. Yeah. To start, I've got this beautiful calamari. Oh, so you just peel away the outside skin? Yeah. And so I'm just going to take it all apart, remove the wings and then the body, and just scrape it as clean as possible, and then paper towel it, because you don't want to wash it, because essentially that's just washing away that flavour. How are you going? How are you going? Yeah, good. What is she going to do? I'm going to utilise this whole calamari. I'm going to char the calamari itself. I'm going to showcase how you can utilise the whole thing. Okay. Uh, so with all the guts and the eyeballs, I'm going to make a squid sauce, and it's okay. going to be on the bottom. Nice. Alana's making an ink sauce out of the guts and the eyes, and I've never seen that before, and it's really, really intriguing. I'm just captivated. Time in the MasterChef kitchen really flies by. It's just going to be a bit of a trial and error today, and I'm going to see what tastes the best. I want this really hot, and then I'm going to throw all the, uh, the guts in there, and then I'm just going to break down, and all that ink's going to come out with some shallot and garlic, and then I'm going to mix that with some mayonnaise, and that's going to be our base. You can see all that ink starting to come out. You can really see that now. I feel like top of the world. Oh my god! <laughs> That's so beautiful. Calamari with barbecue fennel, lemon and ink. Mm. Looks beautiful. Nice bit of char on that. I want more. That's really delicious. It's very subtle, it's very clean. You know, I love seafood, mm. and that's been treated so beautifully. So here are the rules. You've got an open pantry, the garden's in play. You've got 60 minutes to give us that perfectly filled pasta with a perfectly matched sauce. Your time starts now. <laughs> to is get my water onto boil. Time goes so quick in the MasterChef kitchen. It's really easy to forget things. <laughs> I can't cook pasta unless I've got salted boiling water. This way, I won't forget about it. I already have a dish in my mind. Got it. The filling that I want to make is roast pumpkin, garlic and goat's cheese. They're my favourite flavours to go in a pasta, so that's what I want to work with. I feel pretty good about the challenge because I love Italian food and pasta is one of my favourites. And I love mushrooms, so I'll be doing a mushroom stuffed ravioli with porcini broth and burnt sage butter. Hello, Olivia. Hello. How's it going? Hi, Olivia. That's good, I think. I'm getting a workout and eating the go. What's the filling? Uh, the filling is a fairly traditional pumpkin filling, uh, and then it'll just be a burnt butter and sage sauce with a pancetta crumb. You haven't got long left, have you? No. You've got to get that in the fridge resting. Yes. Come on, Olivia. Oh. I've left the pasta to the last possible moment. No, Olivia! I tossed the ravioli into the burnt butter sauce and played up as fast as I can. Come on, Olivia! Come on, Olivia! Make sure everything is done there! Ten seconds! Nine! I'm really happy that I got all the elements on the plate. 
but I'm worried that in the rush, I didn't use enough of my butter sauce. First up, Olivia. I'm really happy that I got all the elements on the plate, but I'm worried that in the rush, I didn't use enough of my butter sauce. What have you cooked for us? It is a pumpkin and thyme filled pasta, bread and pancetta crumb with a burnt butter and sage sauce. The question is, is there a sauce? And I know we saw you toss your pasta in the burnt butter, but there was a, a large bowl of burnt butter there. Yeah. Generous with crumb, with sage, with pancetta. You should have been more generous with the butter. It's pretty. It's a very pretty dish. And the little raviolis themselves are fantastic. We reckon, Sean? Well, from the brief perspective, the ravioli's nice. The only thing is that what Marco mentioned about the butter, when you add more butter and it actually becomes a sauce, you don't get that greasiness. There's a slight greasiness. But look, I, watching you work, I was like, soda bread? My God, what are you doing? But actually, you know, I have to apologise to you because to put that technique into there, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Nidhi, you're next. My ravioli hasn't turned out the way I wanted it to be, but I'm hoping that I've done enough to impress the judges. I really want a chance to fight for the immunity pit. Nini, what have you cooked? Mushroom, ricotta and bacon ravioli with porcini broth and some sage butter and bacon crumble. It does look rich, doesn't it? Although those ravioli aren't the most even. This challenge is about filled pasta with a sauce. So the mere fact you bring a sauce is a big plus in your favour. But for me, the pasta is the weakness because I think it's too thick. For a challenge when we're looking at technique yeah. and finesse, this probably is the dish. Zoe! <laughs> Zoe, what have you cooked? I've made a roast pumpkin and goat's cheese ravioli with speck, sage and butter sauce and a macadamia crumb. Look, I love the generous chunks of bacon. It looks really wonderful. I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I love it because you've not been shy with the nutmeg. Um, you've, you've sweetened that pumpkin with a bit of honey, which is great, so you, you've got over that problem. Yeah. There's enough butter lurking at the bottom of the bowl so you actually get that, that kind of... I think it's absolutely delicious. I love the sage and love the crunch. So for me, that, that's a cracking dish. Flavour, flavour, flavour. Really good pasta too. Thank you. You know, when I looked at it first, I thought there's not enough sauce, but when you eat it together, it works brilliantly. Delicious, delicious, delicious. And I like the fact you didn't overcook your bacon to the point where it's gone salty. Yeah. Really good. Well done. Thank you. Today you'll be cooking my crab avocado salad, my lamb with radishes and peas, And my coffee panna cotta with chocolate coffee sauce. Today I'm definitely in a really positive headspace. I'm very focused and I'm very determined to do well. 
I need to get straight into doing my coffee panna cotta because it will take quite a while to set in the fridge and I need to have it finished before I can move on to the rest of the recipe. I pour out 125 mils of espresso and I combine that with 50 grams of sugar. Exactly 50. The recipe is really specific with what you have to do and I'm really following it and I'm making sure that I do it the exact way. I then need to add my cream and my salt and bring it all to a boil. Chavi, how's it going? Hi, How are you? Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. I'm doing my panna cotta now. I'm on track. Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. The next step's getting onto the lamb. I've got to chop four cloves of garlic, six fillets of anchovies, a bunch of thyme. Uh, combine all that with some olive oil and salt and mix that together in the bowl. Once my marinade's done, I rub it all over the lamb to marinate it and I put it straight in the hot pan on a high heat on the stove to render off the fat. Oh, yum, Chloe. Ten minutes to go. Oh, ten minutes? Yeah, ten oh. minutes. Okay, dry, Chloe, you've got this. Oh, dry, Chloe, you've got it. With 10 minutes to go, I haven't even started my crab salad yet, so I've got to push. 30 mils of mirin. To make the dressing, I put mirin, wasabi, rice vinegar, sesame oil and salt into a bowl and I whisk it to combine. Go on, Chloe. I'm really rushing at this point because I want to get this dish on the plate. everything on the plate today. I'm really happy with how I cooked today. I cooked with confidence. Right, let's uh, taste the entree. Great. Nice amount of chilli. Obviously, there's a lot of dressing there, but there's bags of flavour. Yeah, quite. So that's, oh, so that's <laughs> exciting. That's, yeah. Is this close to your dish, Nigella? Yeah, I think it is. You eat it, it makes you smile. You know, it's alive. All the freshness of the avocado and the crab balanced with that, that wonderful kind of vibrant dressing, and it just makes a really brilliant dish. I love it. I think she's done a really, really good job. Yeah. Right, let's taste the main course. Geez, that lamb's cooked well, isn't it? Yeah. Peas good? Peas are very good. The peas are well seasoned, the meat's well seasoned. I've just eaten a really tasty plate of food. Right, let's taste the dessert. Anyway, but it's a bit more nice though. Mm. Yeah, really nice. It hasn't got that absolute smoothness that a panna cotta no. should have, mm. but I know it's a um, small quibble because it's not it's not completely off. Yeah, it's minimally off, rather than it being sandy or anything really mm. problematic. I'm cooking today something with crab. I was really hoping that there would have been chilli, but there wasn't. So I'm now going to swap it to Szechuan pepper and crab with Chinese broccoli. And hopefully that will bring uh, the flavours through that the judges are wanting. I just got to make sure my presentation is good, clean, and I don't lose focus on what I'm doing. 
minutes to go. Don't make this your last 15 minutes in this kitchen. Come on, let's go. I'm hoping making dumplings is enough. It is a technique that not everybody knows how to do. It's all down to flavour at the end of the day, but it's got to look impressive on the plate as well. Feels like the death march walking up to go to the judges and putting my food in front of them. I'm happy what I've done. Now I just hope the judges are happy. I've got a funny feeling that crustaceans are your thing. Today I cooked a dry fry Szechuan pepper and coriander crab with aromatics and Chinese broccoli. That is absolutely beautiful. I just, I just want to dive into it. <laughs> How nice to have, the, to have the crab already cracked for you. Such a professional, professional idea. I've got a nice chunk of body here. And it's full of this amazing... How good is that? Yeah, so I've got the same cooked. Uh, white meat. There's wisdom and restraint, life experience, generosity in this dish, and it's a true reflection of who Rachel is. I'm walking to face the judges and I'm terrified. I don't know what they're going to say. I know that I've got those flavours right, but it just looks terrible. Your dish to Pali, just yep. explain the dish to us. So, I've made um, marinated duck and ginger, scallion, and Chinese cabbage pot stickers with a dipping sauce. What a shame they weren't plump, there wasn't more. Mm. They're actually quite tasty. Mm. The pastry's silky. It's not tough. The filling's great and, you know, the, the, the pastry's fantastic. The pastry's great. The duck's delicious because it's got the fat in it. I like the sauce. The sauce is delicious. I like the fact that it's, you know, sweet and sticky and gingery and, you know, it's delicious. Bring us one delicious dish using your loaf of bread. You've got an open pantry. And the garden is in play. For my bread challenge, I'm going to do beautiful crusted chicken schnitzel with herbs and an Italian potato salad. To make a schnitzel sounds quite easy and just a simple dish to make, but you have to really be careful because you need that chicken breast really, really juicy and moist. All righty, Gina, what was the first thing that sprung chicken to mind? Schnitzel. Chicken schnitzel. Chicken schnitzel. Oh, I love chicken schnitzel. Chicken schnitzel. I usually brine my chicken breast first. Yeah. And then after that, I'll make a savoury bread crumb thing with uh, some parmesan and parsley and salt and pepper. Right. So uh, good crunchy coating. Good crunchy Brining, coating. you really have to ask yourself, you know, uh, you've got 60 minutes, but you don't now. You've got 50. Yep. So what's it going to do in that? Today I'm making my nonna's meatballs. That's the way that I'm using the bread, in the meatballs, and then I'm gonna use a fresh bread, toss it in the oven. That's gonna need to soak it up the sauce of the meatballs. You got a bubble lap lap in my friend. Today I'm making crumbed lamb cutlets with caramelised onion and a dipping gravy. I love eating the crumb cutlets, Frenching the bone and using it like a lollipop. You can just tuck in, dip it into gravy, sauce, whatever you want, straight up. That's it. I'm done. Well done. I'm feeling great, honestly. Those meatballs are so beautiful. They are unbelievable. And I hope to make Manona proud. They do look good. And that's why we picked them. They look fantastic. So, your Nonna's recipe? Yes, always. I think you should cut one open. Oh, and see. Let's see how it looks. Mm. Looks nice. You know what was nice about it? It was just the texture of it. It's lovely and tender and light. <laughs> It's 
warming the cockles in my heart. <laughs> Did you put a bit of garlic or anything on the bread? Just a little bit on top, freshly crushed. It's really weird because at this point in the competition, I'd be going, meatballs, really? Are they that impressive? But they are so delicious. And it's very rare on, in this competition that people get it right. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. We know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is too simple. But we reckon it looks pretty good, don't we? Yeah, and look, I think the thing about simple is if it's simple and it's brilliant, if it's one of the best schnitzels we've ever tasted, then you got the chance. So we're just hoping that schnitzel's golden and crunchy on the outside, lovely flavor on the crumb, and the chicken perfectly cooked. Was the brining worth it? Yes, oh, was the brining worth it? So what have you put with the schnitzel? What it is is Italian potato salad. A crumb made with the bread, some parmesan, oregano, salt, pepper, and Oregano? Lemon. You're American now, are you? What about oregano? Are oregano. <laughs> I love the crunchy sound. Simple dishes have to be perfect. We have to be able to look you in the eye and go, that's as good as any schnitzel that I've had anywhere in the world. And that is as good as any schnitzel I've had anywhere in the world. And it's because the chicken is so juicy, the scrum is so crunchy, and the herb and the lemon run beautifully through it. And that schnitzel is absolutely exemplary. Well done. Only an hour ago, we were saying you'd never had a dish tasted. No. So what's your dish? Crumbed lamb cutlets with caramelised onions, zucchini, and a red wine jus. Are we dipping or are we pouring? What are you? I think that'd be the way to go. Dip would be um, definitely Not better. Good. It's you, you. personal choice if you want to eat it like a lollipop. Are they cooked? They look like they're just a little bit over. Very tasty, very intense, isn't it? You know, it's a shame, right? Close to the bone. Yeah. Beautifully cooked. The thing is, they're not dry. Lovely crispy coating. And the combination of those kind of sweet caramelised onions and that sauce, that sauce is just smooth and delicious. The onions are a lovely contrast against that with the vinegar in them. The crunch is phenomenal. And, you know, we, I think we're all worried that fresh bread comes and you get enough crunch in there, but you fried them, you fried them hard. Yep. So an absolutely delicious dish. Yeah. You have 60 minutes to bring us a delicious dish using only the ingredients in this spaghetti bolognese. Okay. I'm making pan-fried rum with anchovy butters, smoked carrot puree, and caramelized onion. Sashi, don't turn it too much. Think of the marks. I'm just putting one line. I want to make a tortellini with guanciale and cheese filling with sweet but kind of acidic tomato sauce on the bottom. Today I want to impress the judges with my flavors. The sauce has to have a sweet and a little bit of acidic flavor. And the filling has to have a strong savory flavor. Mm. What is it, Sashi? Pan fried rum with anchovy butter, smoked carrot puree, and caramelized onion. That looks beautiful. Look at that. Yum. The beef's really beautifully cooked, smashing. Love the anchovy butter. I like the smoked carrot puree they've got under there. And I love the idea of those kind of really dark onions because you push them to the edge. Either the words smoked and anchovy butter yeah. and steak and caramel onions, you're going, of course, they belong together. And the flavors are smashing on that. Well done, Session. What have you got, Jess? I've made a guanciale and cheese tortellini with a sweet tomato sauce underneath.
I think the tortellini, they're fantastic. The filling, it's really tasty. The sweetness of the tomato actually balances against the saltiness of the parmesan crisp and the saltiness of the filling. And I think when Charlie and parmesan cheese and bacon filling in a tortellini is a smart idea. Yeah. Great technique. Chloe. <laughs> Spaghetti with anchovies, lemon, and parsley. The combination of guanciale and anchovies is surprising. I think that's a, a brave step, and they work really well together. Aldo! Pasta la carbonara. I think it's got bags of flight. It's an impressive dish. You're hitting his strides. It's really good to see. Thank you. Samira! Yarpa Kingal. It's Azerbaijani traditional dish. It's a little plain. Maybe the missed opportunity for me is that the really tasty bit is the onion, because you just get a lot of beef mince and a bit of pasta. So if you change the proportion of that, you'd have a really yummy dish. Next up, calm. I'm really proud of what I'm presenting to the judges. I just hope the flavours are balanced. So I've made a dark pork broth with roasted pork, crackling, and cute little dumplings. Mm. Well, hello. <laughs> uh -oh. Lots of carrots in the sauce. Lots of carrots in my sauce. It's a mm. carrot sweetness. It's really interesting. It's brilliant, and that sweetness is great. I know that we were concerned about the bitterness, that yeah. the bitterness has dissipated. Um, and it's surprisingly flavoursome. The pork, beautifully cooked. The crackling, super crunchy. Against the silkiness of the, of the dumpling skin, wonderful. I, I think it shows some lateral thinking, using the ingredients from that bolognese and coming up with something completely different. Oh, we love it. Thank you. I need to prove that I can come up with the MasterChef standard dish using ingredients which cost under a dollar and try and come up with something that will impress the judges. Today I'm making a ginger poached pear with lemon meringue. My daughter Emily and I love to make lemon meringue pie. So it's sort of a variation on that idea that I've bought from home and tried to refine a little bit for MasterChef. Today I'm going to make crispy chicken drumettes with a white bean puree and a pear and ginger ale chutney. So today I've decided to make um, your traditional Filipino desserts and it's called halo halo. Halo halo is the cheap version of an ice cream. I grew up on this basically because we couldn't afford ice cream and on a hot day, it's just perfect. Georgie, you're a little surprised. Just a little. I'll be perfectly honest with you. When I wandered around and said, what are you doing? And you said, I'm doing chicken wings with a pear chutney. I was like, no. Oh. The reason we picked you is it looks great. Yep. We love how you've trimmed those chicken wings. Yep. We love crispy, crunchy chicken. Nothing wrong with that. Crispy chicken drumettes with a white bean puree and a pear and ginger ale chutney. You know what I like? It's a clever dish on a budget. And I also like the fact that those chicken wings have been beautifully prepared. Take a chicken wing, everybody at home would normally just leave all the bones in and roast them with, I don't know, Coca-Cola or some sweet and sours. And I like the fact that you spent time and made it, you know, really special. That little drumette's delicious. The lemon meringue pie and ginger ale poached pear. Good. Oh, it's cute. Yeah, looks good. It's nice. I'm going to congratulate you for technique. You know, using a, a box of ingredients that are budget driven to create something that's quite sophisticated with a bit of wow factor as well. So as you cut into it, you know, something else appears, so wonderful. It's a Filipino dessert. It's called Halo Halo. It looks spectacular, honestly. 
looking forward to it. You've used, other than the peanuts, nothing that would go in a traditional halo halo. That's why I love this dish. Love it. You're going to have 60 minutes to bring us a dish with a thrilling filling. Today I'm going to be doing a Sichuan peppercorn crusted chicken wing. And it's going to be stuffed with mushrooms with five spice and, and basil just for a little twist. I'm going to do a bit of a sweet stuffed crostelli, so it's sort of like a sweet ravioli that's going to be stuffed with a chocolate ganache prune sherry filling, deep fried with a cut caramel sauce. Yum. I've decided to do a um, brioche toasty today. Uh, it's going to have a Pedro Jimenez and blueberry jam with camembert. Um, I'm also going to do a, like a walnut crust on the outside of the toasty. I know it's a bit of an unusual feeling, but I think it's gonna work. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right, Eloise, what did you cook? Um, I've done some crostily filled with chocolate prunes and Pedro Jimenez. Good stuff. Look great. I think the presentation looks great. Thank you. Sauce and we'll try. Mm. What is the sauce? It's a bitter Pedro Jimenez caramel. I still know it's a risk using really dark, bitter notes inside the flavour of my filling. I just hope that they like it. Looks amazing. Mm. Yeah. Looks amazing. Yeah, dip and go, isn't it? Bitter is really the new black at the moment. Um, bitter flavours are bang on point. This is a really bitter dessert. There's enough freshness there, there from the plums. It's delicious. Yeah, it's thank you. It's beautiful. And I love the bitterness, because when you get a bit of that cream, it just helps. It's a beautiful dish, and it's filled, and it's yum. Eliza, what have you cooked? Today, I've cooked a blueberry jam camembert brioche toasty mm. with a salted walnut crumb. I'm not sure how the judges are going to take this dish, whether they're going to actually see what I'm trying to achieve here or whether they just think I've completely lost my marbles. Why? All right, let's have a look inside. Love, love the saltiness of the walnut crumb. Love the, the colour that you've got in the brioche around the edge. Not enough cheese, more flavour punch. Just to balance the, the, the kind of the sweet sourness of the jam, really. You know what they're doing for me? They're just making me smile. And regardless of whether we're thinking about the camembert, it's got loads of filling. The blueberry jam's delicious. I love the salty walnut crumb. Um, and it's a proper toasty. <laughs> I like them. Thanks. I like them. Thank wow, you. this is going to be an interesting, <laughs> interesting yeah. day. So, Sarah, what you got for us? So, today I've made uh, Sichuan crusted chicken wings stuffed with mushrooms, five spice, basil, and a little tamarind sauce down the bottom. It looks beautiful, pretty as a picture but it's all about that filling inside. Oh, sound really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's definitely filling there. Yeah. Yeah? Wow. So you've ticked that box. <laughs> now, is it thrilling? I'm just, just going to go in. This. Great.
Oi, oi, that. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> That's great, number one, because it's crispy, it's crunchy, it's a good amount of salt in there, I'm enjoying the filling, and I'm, I especially like that tamarind sauce on the bottom, because it just makes you salivate, it's delicious. And it makes me happy, that, mm. and the filling, the texture of it when it breaks up in your mouth, it's delicious, those mushrooms. Yeah. Mm. I'm not quite sure. I yeah, I was, <laughs> I was eyeing it off as well. And I was just thinking, good. My plan is to keep it as simple as possible, so I'm going to do some thick oven-baked chips with a side of garlic aioli. I lay my potatoes in a tray, plenty of olive oil, some sprigs of rosemary, and I throw them in the oven. Hey, come on, Sam. Let's come go, on, Sam. Let's come go. on, Benji. Come on, Aaron. Today, I'm going to triple cook the chips. I'm going to put them in boiling water to part cook them, take them out and get them in the freezer, and then get them back into the deep fryer at a low temperature. Then I'll put them in the freezer again. Really important that they dry out and cool in between to make sure you get the real crispiness on the outside when they're finally cooked. Then I'll finish them off with the second fry to get them nice and crunchy. I need to get on with the barbecue sauce, so I chop up an onion, I deglaze the pan with a bit of bourbon, add the chopped tomatoes. And grab some Worcestershire sauce and some soy sauce to make sure it's got that real smoky flavour to it. And then leave that to reduce down to make a nice, sticky, tasty sauce. Aaron, Hi. so, chips barbecue sauce, yes? Yes, they're triple cooked chips. I boiled them first, then cooked them at 160 in oil to seal them, and then crunched them up at the last minute. But the, you know the problem is when things are as crunchy as that, <laughs> everything goes out of our mind other than Aye. must eat. Oh, nice. Nice, yeah, fair enough. Gee, I really like that. That's what makes chips addictive, is just, it is absolutely the crunch, isn't it? Mm. But that sauce is yeah. smoky and balanced well, the right amount of heat, it's just delicious. And the right dippiness. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Dippiness is important. <laughs> there is a you know, dip dipometer and that's... Uh, yeah, on, on the dipometer scale. Stand up. <laughs> Great. Get me away from it <laughs> now. now. Yeah. Nice work. Louise? Hi. What is it? This is twice cooked chips with a whiskey sauce. A whiskey sauce? What else is in the sauce? I had some tomato passata and some apples, which I stewed and then pureed through. You pleased? Considering it wasn't what I initially intended to do, I'm happy with how it's turned out. It certainly lots of crispy bits in there. I left all the crispy bits on because they're my favourite bits. Mmm. The crunchy bits are delicious. The richness of that sauce is great. There's a nice hit of, of quality whiskey in there, which is unusual, but I think it works really well with the chips. And, yeah. you know, put that on a menu in Scotland and you'd have a queue of 100 miles long. Put that on a menu anywhere. I think that tastes great. George, how do they go on the dipper meter? <laughs> very, very oh, good. Yeah. It's, it's redlining. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great stuff. Thank you. Work out Go, no, Jess. I'm going to do a dark chocolate firm ganache that's going to be coated in some crushed salty crisps. And I'm also going to do some potato dumplings and a balsamic jelly. So it's kind of like a sweet concept of salt and vinegar. Potato curry with um, potato chips on top. The first thing I start doing is to make the broth. Yes, Michi! So I start to chop garlic, shallots and chilies. I add in vegetable stock, fish sauce, soy sauce, and let it reduce just to intensify the flavours. Yes, 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 yes. Nine, Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Can you tell us what the dish is? So it's my grandma's vegetable curry. I cut the potatoes into cubes and just added it to the curry. I also sliced up the potatoes and flash fried it. It become like the crisp. Good. What do you reckon, boys? It looks thick, looks rich, looks tasty. Yeah. It does look tasty. Yeah. I like the fact too that she's thought about playing the potato in two different ways. So you've got the soft potato in the curry and then the crisp potatoes on top is great. Fabulous.
That is a warm, fuzzy bowl of Indonesian love, isn't it? <laughs> it's delicious. The silkiness of the potato is perfect. And with those crispy potatoes on top, absolutely a soup that is all about the humble spud, but elevated the way we wanted it. Very subtle and clever use of spices. It's not too hot, it's not too spicy, it's not too funky, it's not too out there. There's no chicken, there's no huh? beef, there's no seafood in it, and you don't need it. Yeah. I think the judges are either going to love it or they're going to hate it. What have you cooked? So I've made for you my sweet version of salt and vinegar, a chocolate ganache, potato dumplings, crispy, salty potato crisps. There's a balsamic gel underneath. It has that vinegar hit and fresh pomegranate seeds. Oh, Jess, you left nothing behind in that cook, did you? How pretty is that? I love that. It's a big surprise. I had absolutely no idea that this dessert would look delicious. Yeah. Looks good though, doesn't it? It's great. You know, I'm most interested to tear open that um, yeah. and see whether it's totally cooked. What you lose? What you lose? That's delicious. Wow, Jay, that is absolutely fabulous, isn't it? That is so balanced between salty, sweet, the bitterness of chocolate is so yum. The chocolate, the vinegar, the crispy potatoes, all these little elements are just absolutely having a party in my mouth and completely unexpected. The fact that the vinegar in the gel is soaked into the base of those little donuts really accentuates the vinegar hit you get with the chocolate. Yeah. It's fantastic. For some bizarre reason, it works really well. She has ticked the brief in mm. all aspects and blown my mind at the same time. Yeah. yeah.